So Hello, welcome to our virtual session today. This is Michelle Wilcox, and I would like to introduce to you who we have here with us today. We have Ashley Thoreau with Monument Health. We have Mar Marguerite Tuthill, is that correct? And we have Tyler Veach. We have Rachel Talley from Human Resources, and we have our new benefit manager, Lynette Siegeslaw. And I'm gonna turn it over to Lynette. So thank you everyone for attending. Today, we're gonna to go through our open enrollment education session, and this will explain benefits coming up for the 2023 year. And it will also give you an opportunity to ask questions towards the end. What you're gonna to learn today are what your benefits for 2023 look like, what providers are part of the Monument Health Network, how Monument Health can help you, and how to complete your 2023 enrollment process. So since uh, joining D51 in June of this year, I've been diligently trying to get caught up on the history and the current state of our health insurance plan. When I started, a request for proposal or an RFP was already underway in which local businesses were given the opportunity to submit a proposal for services with the best price for those services being given to us. A committee was selected with members of our insurance committee, board of education members, and administrators to review these submissions and make a recommendation based on what was submitted. A recommendation came forth based on what the committee felt was the best option for both D51 and our employees. I've sent out several communications in the past couple of months explaining our process and decisions that were made. I want to reiterate three specific areas in regards to these communications. The first one is why we needed to make this decision. Costs related to our overall health plan have grown unsustainably for both our employees and D51 over the past four years, which has resulted in employee premiums increasing by an average of one an average of 114% since 2019. Our decision was made based on D51's health insurance objectives and in support of our strategic plan. This was to maintain comprehensive and affordable benefit package for all of our employees, reduce administrative complexity while inviting maximum innovation and best practices, control costs through a clinically integrated network, partner with local providers willing to, tr to treat D D51's health plan with fiduciary care and to offer a choice of plan options and providers. What does this decision mean? Effective 1-1-23, D51 will change from a two option plan to a single option plan with Monument Health. Plan monthly premiums are based on the number and type of dependents covered, uh, for example, family coverage. This plan has a three-tiered benefit structure with Monument Health as tier one, and tiers refer to what you are gonna pay depending on the provider and services found in that tier. Tier one will remain with Monument Health. Those are what get the deepest discounts. Tier two will be for all United Healthcare options, and that will include CHP. Tier three will be for out of network. On our open enrollment, site, I guess Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong on this. We have a, a site for open enrollment and we have all of these documents there. On that, you're also gonna find, and I've also emailed this out, is that structured benefit um, tier sheet that will detail what tiers one, two, and three are. And the third main question that we're getting is, do I have to change my provider? No, you're not required to change your provider but there will be a difference in cost associated with retaining a provider outside of tier one. Tier one will provide the largest savings to both our employee and the district. With our medical benefits, we've been able to reduce premium costs for 2023. This shows a uh, maximum for a family to save $3,511.32. You'll notice on this chart, there will be the premiums for each of those um, elective types of coverage, employee, employee plus children, employee plus spouse and family for both full-time and part-time. There will be a zero monthly premium for the employee only costs or coverage. There will be reduced premiums for spouse, children and family plans. 
We will continue with 100% deductible wage preventive care. There will be $0 on copay for teledoc visits, and you will still be eligible for the 300 deductible credit. So any if you obtain a physical or annual exam in 2022, that will make you eligible for that $300 deductible credit for 2023. The diabetes program will continue. We are currently in the process of building the, the total diabetes care program. Monument Health is still in the process of developing this program. They will be reaching out to current members during the month of November to discuss the program and enroll members for the 2023 benefit year. The designated pharmacy for this new program will be announced once more details are made available. Transition of care. This is a really big question for those that are currently being seen for a complex or a uh, long-term health issue. If you feel that you fall under a transition of care, we're gonna want you to contact Monument Health directly. Claims will be transitioned on a case-by-case -case basis. Employees can contact Monument Health to discuss their current treatment plan and determine if their care will fall under the transition of care guidelines. You'll need to contact Monument Health to discuss this with the phone number listed here, as well as you can also email them. They also have a website that Tyler will speak more of um, in his part of the presentation, and I'm gonna turn that over to him now. Thanks, Linda, for that. Uh, all of you all online, thanks for joining us today. I understand how busy you are, so I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to join us. Uh, before I get started, please, if you're on the on the call, go ahead and enter your name into the chat. We are holding a raffle uh, for all individuals who've participated in either a virtual or a live session for a couple of awesome prizes. So when you get a chance, go ahead and enter your name first and last in the chat. So if you're the winner, we can contact you. Um, uh, as for me, uh, I am the manager of business operations for Monument Health. So my uh, job at this at this time is really just to make sure that your health care is uh, is covered and, and what you need is, is taken care of. So uh, Monument Health, we're a local company uh, here in Grand Junction, we're a small organization, but being a local company, what that means is uh, we get to know you and we get to know your health care. Uh, when you call us and, and if you understand anything from this conversation with me today, I understand that call us is the is what we want you to do. When you call us, you'll you'll get to speak with us. Uh, it's either going to be myself or my colleague Heather. You're most likely to speak with, uh, and we're going to get to know you, and we're going to be able to help you out with that. You know what it says up there, but we we like to think that you aren't a number, you're a person. We're going to treat you as such. Uh, you can see here, this is a list of some of uh, our hospital and facility partners. We're fortunate enough to have a couple of individuals from these organizations on the line with us. Today, I'll be turning it over to them shortly. Uh, but really, when we designed this plan, we designed it with you in mind. And that sounds kind of like a, a, a catchy line, but it's true. Uh, we had partnerships with these organizations. And when we explained to them what we were doing with the school district, uh, each of these groups came to us with some really brilliant ideas on how to just make this as, as good a policy as possible for you all. Um, and, and really, what we were able to do was bring the best quality care in the Valley to you at the, uh, the best possible cost. So these organizations are all part of that tier one network that Lynette had mentioned, uh, and they're gonna offer you the deepest discounts available. Urgent care and aftercare options uh, are available to you. I wanna start this by saying, if you have an emergency, please go to the emergency room. That being said, if maybe you have a pressing issue and you can't get into your doctor, but it's not one of those very emergent issues, these options are available to you. So we've got options um, with Docs on Call, Redlands After Hours, Family Health West uh, is getting ready to open an organization here at the beginning of next year. In addition to that, many of our practices offer 24-7 on-call services with the provider. Uh, you also have Teladoc as an option to you at no uh, copay for that. I think Lynette's going to mention that a little bit later. Uh, again, really, the point here is, you know, we, we have services for you uh, that maybe would be more financially viable. Uh, you know, your current plan has urgent care copays at $25 and emergency room copays at $500 copay. So go if you need it, but there are other options available. 
Uh, as for primary care, uh, and again, I've got a couple of these individuals here in a moment that are going to jump on and join us. Uh, but this is really where Monument Health hangs its hat. Uh, we are very proud of our primary care network. We have 260 doctors in our network. Uh, spanning a whole host of practices here. We have those who specialize in the whole family. We also have pediatricians and specifically uh, women's health physicians available. Um, you know, we, we believe in having a medical home. You have a $300 deductible credit that's applied to you. If you get an annual physical, we wanna make sure you've got that connection to a primary care home and a primary care physician. Uh, if you don't have one, look to be hearing from us at some point in the future to try and connect you with one. If you do have one, by all means, continue to see them, um, recognizing that if they're in that CHP, that tier two network, there will be an additional copay starting on January 3rd. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to each of these individuals uh, very briefly, just so they can make introductions. I want to thank those of you who are on the call for taking your time to speak today. Um, and for all of you, additionally, uh, they will be on afterward for uh, questions if need be. Uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Mike Fromenko first. He's Chief Medical Officer over at Primary Care Partners. Uh, Dr. Fromenko, welcome. Hey, thanks. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, great that uh, we have the time to um, offer you some information as well as answer any questions uh, that you might have. I certainly appreciate your time on a busy Monday. Uh, so I'm Dr. Michael Permanco. I'm a family doc. I've been here since 1995, did residency here, um, and then started practice at Primary Care Partners back in 1998. Um, and I still see patients three days a week. On my other, on my other days of the week, I'm uh, filling responsibility and roles as Chief Medical Officer at Monument Health, as well as here at Primary Care Partners, uh, where we have family docs, uh, as well as pediatricians, and an internist uh, on, on staff. Um, of course, as Tyler said, we've got uh, loads of primary care offerings throughout the Monument Health Network. Um, and, uh, and again, um, many different locations, uh, depending on where you live uh, here in the Valley. Uh, and of course, um, there's options uh, in multiple different organizations for you. Primary care partners, um, you know, we've got facilities here in town, of course, at a couple different sites and then uh, pediatric and family practice uh, offerings out in Fruta uh, as well. Um, we'll be uh, via Monument Health. Uh, we've got uh, embedded behavioral health at many of our offices. We've got uh, diabetic education and counseling at many of our offices. Uh, we've got physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy available at many of our offices. And of course, we pride ourselves at exchanging information with the hospitals uh, via the local network that ties information together, meaning when something happens at one of the facilities, the other doctors in the network get that information, uh, which is impar very important for continuity as well as uh, helping people navigate a pretty complex medical environment these days <clears throat> that can be uh, frustrating at times. So we're looking forward to um, uh, helping you all with manage your health, prevent um, health issues is one of our main goals. But if you are, are dealing with chronic health issues, we want to make sure that we're doing a great job of helping you manage that. Um, but we've got a, a, an interest in both areas where let's help you manage chronic illness, but let's also do a really great job in helping you prevent anything that we can such that you don't have to enter that complex uh, environment. That would be the best bet. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Fermenko. Uh, next up, I'd like to switch it over to Dr. Corey Klein. He's the CEO of Family Health West. Dr. Klein. Thank you and good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Corey Klein. I'm also a family physician that trained at the residency uh, here locally. And uh, I became the president and CEO of Family Health West about three years ago. And prior to that, I practiced broad spectrum family medicine. We here at Family Health West are primarily Fruta based, but we do have a primary care clinic in the Redlands uh, near Redlands Middle School on the corner of Redlands Parkway and Broadway. And uh, we have 22 primary care providers uh, at our locations in the Redlands and here in Fruta. They often alternate. 
in between those two locations. Our Redlands After Hours Clinic is available at the Redlands site. That is available to our uh, patients, but it's also available if you have another primary care provider in town. Uh, it's also available on first come first serve basis for you as well. Uh, so you can take advantage of that even if you don't choose our primary care uh, clinics. We also have integrated behavioral health for a patient-centered medical home. We have a certified diabetic educator and dietitians on staff as well to support you if you have those particular issues. We see everything from newborns uh, all the way uh, to end of life uh, in our primary care uh, clinics. We do have an urgent care coming soon to Fruta that's gonna open uh, somewhere uh, at the end of the year uh, before your uh, January 1st. Uh, it's actually incorrect on that slide for the location. That's our pediatric therapy uh, uh, clinic. That'll be at 401 Cocopelli, but uh, we'll have more information out uh, when that opens up. That will also be available to any person regardless of whether you get your primary care at Family Health West. We are a full service uh, acute uh, hospital. We're also a critical access hospital. So we offer a wide range of services from lab, x-ray, emergency services, uh, inpatient services. We have two ORs. We have general surgery, orthopedic surgery. The gynecologic surgeons come out here. Uh, and just about any surgery you could wish for uh, with the exception of, of uh, complicated surgeries, ICU, trauma, those kinds of things. Uh, obviously those need a higher level of care uh, than the size of our hospital can handle. But all of your general uh, needed uh, types of lab and surgery can be done here. We also have over a hundred therapists. We do physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy for both adults and children. Uh, we do some unique things as well. We have a certified driving program. So if you have, if you're worried about driving safety, you can get a certified driving evaluation. And we also have one of the only pool therapies as well. We have three occupational therapists that do pool therapy at the Fruta Community Center across the street. Uh, so that's a little bit more about us and I'm uh, happy to answer any questions you might have about Family Health West. Thank you, Dr. Fireman, we appreciate you. Uh, next up, we're gonna bring Joya Boyd on the lunch, the practice administrator over at uh, Patterson Primary Care. Yes, hi everyone, um, I'm Joya Boyd. So I'm practice administrator for um, primary care within the SCL, now Intermountain Medical Group. And under my umbrella is um, St. Mary's Family Medicine Residency, which um, I think Dr. Klein and Dr. Preminko referred to, and they said that they did their residency here. Um, great clinic with um, 27 residents, and we have over 50% of our reg uh, residents actually stay within the Grand Valley, um, as you can see on this phone call. Um, so that's um, about great about that clinic. We also have 15 faculty or attending physicians, family physicians at that clinic. Um, and then Patterson Primary Care just opened a brand new, pretty state-of-the-art building last year, um, right off of Patterson near the new coffee trader. Um, and so in total, um, we have very similar services offering um, newborn to end of life care with integrated behavioral health. We're expanding our diabetes education program and um, offer some after hours care as well as Saturday um, office hours as well. So um, as with the others, I do look forward to any questions about primary care and I'm happy to give my contact information if anyone on the line has questions about establishing care or um, things like that. So thank you for having me today. Thanks for that, Joy. We're gonna switch over next to uh, Gina Smith. She's a certified nurse midwife with uh, Bloom and Babies Birth Center. And doesn't look like she's on the call. Uh, so if that's not the case, we can get just keep moving. And we'll go on to uh, Jen Tuning. She's a St. Mary's nursing leader and director of women's and children's services over there. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jen. Like you said, I'm director of women's and children's service line. And I can actually speak to Bloom and Babies if Gina's not on the line because I oversee that as well. Um, we offer a full range of um, labor and delivery services, all the way from Bloom and Babies Birth Center, which is a freestanding birth center, one of the only two in Colorado, um, and all the way through to um, high-risk labor and delivery here at the hospital. We do work in partnership with the midwives at Bloom and Babies. Um, if you want to have 
your baby parents are unable to, we they will partner with um, a doc and they will actually have you delivered here at the hospital, but delivered together with both the midwife and the doctor. So that the um so that you don't lose that continuity of care with your midwife. They do offer water birth. They offer all kinds of just um, alternative type births down there at the um, birth center. And um, I believe this year we're set to hit about 180 births down there for the year, which um, is good for them. That'll be the highest so far. Um, here on at the hospital we have labor and delivery. We have mother baby. Um, we do have a level three NICU, so we take care of babies viability and up. So we try to keep most babies here. If if they are too complex, we do end up having to send them to children's, but we try our best to keep babies here as much as we can. We have we work in hand in hand with um, MFM, which is um, for high risk moms during their pregnancy. So we work with them to try to keep the babies here as well. We do have an eight bed pediatric unit as well for. Um, inpatient pediatric low risk um we don't do icus level care here but we do um up to icu care for our kids so we try to keep everybody close to home we also work with children's hospital we have a few visiting physicians that come in here and we also um work with our oncology services to deliver chemotherapy and other infusions here at on our peds unit to keep kids close at home once they've established with their um, oncologist so Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Jen. And, and thank you all for joining us on this call today. Again, for those of you who are participating in it, uh, these individuals will remain behind. Uh, so when we open up the Q&A section, they can answer any questions you may have. Uh, if you do have any questions throughout this, uh, we're just having you please enter those in the chat. Uh, and when we come to that Q&A section, we'll, we'll make, somebody, make sure somebody uh, reads those for you. As we transition over uh, into the new section here, Let's see if we can get our slides up and running for you. Perfect. Uh, and, and as as we're working through uh, this, welcome to the new world of of online means. Certainly, uh, I just want to kind of let you know you've obviously heard that we we bring providers to you uh, in a robust network. Uh, in addition to that, Monument Health provides a whole host of services. Uh, I'm going to run you through kind of just an example here that maybe gets gets that point across. Let's say uh, you and your spouse are are prepping to have a, a new addition to the family. You're expecting a baby. Uh, when you find out, certainly reach out to Monument Health. We're going to help you get connected to someone with Jen's team. Uh, you know, in the birthing center. Uh, as you progress through, we're going to make sure that you've got that connection to the women's health care team as well. Uh, you know, we're going to make sure you're taken care of when you get to the hospital. Uh, while you're in the hospital in an inpatient setting, we're going to be reaching out to your nursing team, making sure that you're doing all right. And then when it comes time for you to discharge, you and baby are doing great and have everything that you need connect you with the pediatrician so that way you know as as you're bringing the baby home all of your needs are being met there and then that care is going to continue through you know obviously through the childhood that pediatrician we're going to make sure that they're connected with you as that kiddo grows up they get their immunization for need for school and the intent really is just to take care of you throughout the duration of your time with us in addition to that, you're going to hear from us occasionally things like if you have a preventive screening that's due, we may outreach to you just let you know, hey, you've got an annual physical coming up, or we know that you haven't had your, your routine mammogram set up for those. Uh, we're also going to, again, follow up after a hospital stay or an emergency room visit, just making sure that you're doing okay. And certainly, we want to make sure you have that primary care connection. So, you know, we may reach out to you just to make sure that you have a doctor um, and that you're seeing them, you know, at least for your annual physical. Uh, so the next steps, um, first and foremost, please reach out to us if you have any questions. The phone number is right there at the top of the slide. It's also in almost all of the email communications that you've seen regarding us. It'll be in your benefit handbook that you have. Um, it's open enrollment starting now. So uh, all those documents that you saw from your HR team about getting enrolled in benefits, please take advantage of that. Start thinking now about scheduling that annual fiscal with your provider so that way you can get that $300 deductible credit. 
you don't have a primary care physician yet, or you're looking to change into the new uh, the new Monument Health tier, reach out to us. We'll help you get connected with that. Uh, and again, any other services or thoughts that you think you may need, go ahead and give Monument Health a call. We're here to help you. Um, that's uh, it for my spiel. I'm going to turn it over to Lynette. But before I go, I really just want to take a, a moment to thank you all for this opportunity. Um, I am a D51 graduate. I take pride in the fact that I am in a position now that I get to take care of those people who helped me get where I'm at. So thank you for trusting me with that. Thank you, Tyler and the Monument team. Um, as you can see, Monument Health has just totally came to the table in trying to help us make this work. It has been a great relationship so far, and I'm really looking forward to continuing that through throughout this next year and beyond. So in going further into our benefits, I, I want to state that we will have our benefit booklet available on that open enrollment site as well. And that's where you'll find a lot of these additional benefits. For prescription benefits, that will be no change going into 2023. These are the same benefits that we currently have. So those tiers for in-network and out-of-network, it's it just will remain the same going into 2023. For your dental benefits, we were, re we were able to reduce premium costs as well in this area. Uh, a family will save almost $67 a year. I know it's not a lot of money, but any savings are what we're going after at this point in time. We want to save you money so that you can be spending that on other areas besides your insurance. So on your dental benefits, these will remain the same as well. You'll get two oral exams every calendar year two cleanings per calendar year. Your coverage will go up to $1,500 for diagnostic, preventative, basic, and major services, $1,500 lifetime orthodontic services, and the deductible of $50 per individual or $100 per family will remain in effect as well. Your vision insurance will stay exactly the same as it is today. That will be, be detailed even more in our benefit booklet but you'll get that one eye exam every 12 months, as well as a pair of prescription glasses and frames or contacts. So those premiums remain the same. Again, you'll find additional information about this in that benefit booklet. The flexible spending account, we did increase the pre-tax dollars you're able to contribute to this from $2,750 to $2,850 per calendar year. And that's in, um, in line with IRS guidelines. So if you do plan to spend um, money in that tier two, this is a great way that you can set aside pre-tax dollars to help um, pay for some of those out-of-pocket medical expenses now. So if you want further information on that, we're happy to talk to you in more detail about that during this open enrollment. Uh, you will have to make these changes and set aside time to, to sign up for these for 2023. And, I'm going to let Michelle talk one second about the the premiums that fall under the um, pre-tax and post-tax. Do you want to sure talk briefly about that? Yeah. So for those of you that don't understand pre-tax and after-tax, what Lynette's referring to is with a FSA account or the dependent daycare account, those are money set aside pre-tax. The difference with pre-tax is what an employee is pre-tax payroll pulls the money from your paycheck, then they calculate your taxes. After tax, they charge you taxes on the money and then they pull it out. But if you're getting ready to retire, PARA recommends that you go after tax three to four years prior to retirement because what Uncle Sam doesn't see in taxes, PARA doesn't see as income. And your retirement is based on your three highest average years or your HSA. So it's recommended to go after tax if you're getting ready to retire within the next three to four years. That's good, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, district paid life insurance and assigning your beneficiaries. So there will be no change to your life insurance that the district provides you that remains through MetLife and your coverage limit is still two times your basic yearly earnings rounded up to the nearest thousand. So your maximum benefit or up to a maximum benefit of $250,000. We're asking that even if you're not making any changes on your insurance, that you're at least going in and making changes or at least looking at your beneficiaries to make sure that they are up to date. 
And an example of this will be if you have an ex-spouse on that, if something were to happen to you, even though you're not here, that ex-spouse is going to get everything that you have um, designated for them as a beneficiary. So we want to make sure that those beneficiaries are up to date. And if, um, if there's an unforeseen circumstance that we have to submit a claim on your behalf, we want to make sure that that's going to truly who you want it to go to. The Employee Assistance Program, this is a wonderful benefit that the district offers. This is through Triad, and this gives each employee and their family up to four free confidential counseling sessions per year per incident to help you with the items that are listed on this page. We have more information regarding this detailed in our benefit book, and we um, invite you to contact any of us if you have any additional questions on this. We offer other optional voluntary benefits. So through Guardian, we have accident, hospital indemnity, critical illness, and short-term disability. Uh, through MetLife, you can also purchase voluntary supplemental life insurance. The benefit booklet also details these in more detail and you can contact us if you have further questions. Teladoc is a great service if you're unable to get in. This is a $0 copay for you. Again, uh, there's some points on this slide that explain it, but the benefit booklet will also detail this in more details. Next step. So today, as of today, open enrollment is live. So we're inviting you to go to the website that is listed here with this username and password and the company of D51. This will get you into the open enrollment system and allow you to make any changes for your 2023 upcoming benefits. We want you to visit the D51 employee benefit site for more details and to download a copy of the benefit guide, and that can be found at that web address. And then we're inviting you to meet with HR or Monument Health to answer any questions. If you come to one of our live sessions, this will also be an opportunity to where you can meet with us individually to have your questions answered. And then um, this is just reminding you how to get a hold of us. So on the D51 side, it's Michelle and myself that you'll be contacting. As long as you email that benefits at d51schools.org, we'll, one of us will end up getting that and we can assist you. On the Monument Health side, you'll want to email support at monumenthealth.net. They have their phone number listed as well as their address. Um, that directory that they have for their website there, that is a great directory that they have built for D51 employees um, and our families to where that is where you can go to access the current information from them. You can also find a list of all of their providers at that site, and they are continuously updating this as new providers are added to that. And I think that is just great because even in the short time that we've had um, we've already had more providers sign on. So it's been an awesome opportunity for the district. So now I'll open it up to where if anyone uh, online has any questions, either for myself, for Tyler, the Monument staff, or any of our providers, um, please ask now. Um, I was going to uh, just read off a couple of questions sure. we received through the chat. So anyone that um, is on, if you'd like to chat us with questions, you're welcome to do that. And I will um, make sure to ask the group, um, and then we will we will unmute in just a moment if you'd like to um, verbally ask your question. So, um, first question I got was, how do I delete my children off the plan? So, in the open enrollment online system, uh, when you're selecting the medical um, dependents that you would like to cover, you will just unclick uh, those kiddos. So I would go ahead and leave them listed under your dependent screen because that will allow you to identify them for beneficiaries um, or other purposes. But then when you go to elect that medical plan coverage, you'll just want to uncheck those children. Great, thank you. And then um, the next question we got was, if we choose a new Monument Health position, how is the transfer of medical records handled? Um, so I know that really kind of varies depending on the position, but i um, wondering if uh, maybe one of our position leaders that's on, um, Dr. Formenko, if, if you're still on, uh, yeah. would you like to address that question? Sure. 
Um, you know, this is this happens a lot, as you might imagine, as people move from place to place. Uh, most offices are set up to where you just sign a form. Of course, we need the patient's um, uh, written signature uh, to legally forward medical records to a new clinic. So most offices have a form that you sign and you basically say where you want your records sent. Um, and then the office um, will uh, either electronically or via old fashioned fax send uh, um, uh, those records uh, to the provider of your, that you've chosen. Do any of our other providers um, that are on want to comment on the record transfer process? I, this is Dr. Klein at Family Health West. Uh, as Dr. Promenko said, I think it's pretty easy. Uh, you sign a release of information, however that looks for each individual hospital or provider, and uh, they do the rest. Um, we can get your paper record if it's paper. Electronically, we can get uh, electronic copies. You can also go to your previous provider and ask for a copy of your record. Uh, sometimes you'll do that. Sometimes they charge a nominal copying fee or something like that. If you want to buy paper, sometimes they'll give it to you electronically. But honestly, it's easier usually to go to your new provider, sign the form, and then electronically it can be inputted into your new record. It's really, it's really the most convenient way to do it uh, here at Family Health West. And that includes primary care and specialty care um, as well. Thank you. Um, we just got one more question. If we change providers, will our current plan of care stay the same? Um, so, you know, obviously this is um, very individual, right? In, in terms of what your plan of care is um, and how that gets transitioned over. So um, as Lynette mentioned, if you are currently in the midst of um, some sort of uh, health episode or, or intensely in treatment, um, please give us a call. We have um, a number of our practices. We have a, a direct uh, contact within the uh, clinical staff. So we will connect you with a nurse um, or physician to talk through your, um, your plan of care in more detail um, to help you have a really seamless transition. But our goal is to make that as seamless as possible. Um, and, and yes, I mean, and we're not going to completely change the way that you're being cared for. The intent is to is to make it seamless if you need to make a change at all. Um, in, in many cases, uh, you won't need to. Our network is is very large. Um, hopefully that answered your question, um, but I would invite, uh, we don't have any more questions in the chat, so I would invite anyone to please go ahead and unmute if you have a question and um, feel free to ask us. I just chatted the uh, landing page as well for all of our um, providers, but of course that was in the presentation as well. Anything else you wanna share about resources available? Um, I know we're having a number of these sessions upcoming, so more opportunities to come. We're gonna have providers there. We have a whole lot of swag to give out <laughs> from uh, many of our provider partners as well as from D51. Um, yeah. Just a reminder, this is Michelle. Um, we will be at 5.30 today. Our team will be at Fruita 8-9 at 5.30, and I believe we're in the cafeteria. So if you need help with your open enrollment, feel free to join us. And at those live sessions, you will have um, actual computers. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to come and actually complete your open enrollments live, you can do that, and we'll have a number of resources available to help. Um, we will also have um, schedulers from several of our practices there, so we can help you make an appointment in real time. Of course, if you have any questions or need help making an appointment, you can call Monument Health at any time, and we will get you connected to anyone in our network um, that, uh, that you need to see, um, whether that's a specialist, primary care, et cetera. So we're 
We're available to help, so please call. Thank you for attending. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to the Michelle and I, Monument Health uh, providers, any of us. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks,